Let's watch it. This guy is stealing my package from a car, and this guy took my package off a porch. But what they don't realize is this is the final glitter bomb. Glitter bomb 5.0. Oh, and for no. the final year when you lift the lid, the glitter is delivered by drones. Five years ago, like these two stole a $6 package from my porch. Little did they know that singular act on an otherwise unremarkable lovely spring morning would set in motion a series of events that would unleash buckets of glitter in the homes of would-be porch pirates nationwide <laughs> and eventually lead to the takedown of a $60 million international crime. I remember watching this video and this video was so fucking insane. I was actually impressed by this. So today, not only will I show you what happens when you combine autonomous drones and glitter, and then what happens when you get into mm -hmm. a chess match with a bunch of car thieves, yep. but I'll end the whole series with an update on what happened to those massive scam call centers we yeah, infiltrated curious. and exposed in India. Now, if you're new here, the 10 second recap is that after that package was stolen from my house, the police wouldn't do anything about it, even when presented with the evidence. So at that point, Why? I knew that Why? What are they for? What what are our taxes going towards if they're not going to arrest people that are stealing shit? Avenge the theft, I was going to have to use my engineering skills to go full home alone. Okay. And seeing how this is the final That's glitter so bomb dumb. video, I think it's worth a brief recap of how the box design has naturally evolved. Okay, over how's years. this? Out of the game year one, it was a simple concept where when you took the lid off the bait package, this cup would spin, unleashing yeah. a pound of the world's finest glitter. Seems simple And then enough. hidden inside to record all the action, we had four phones, plus a canister right. of fart spray in an effort to encourage the thief to get rid of the box so we could go and retrieve it. And that okay. went pretty well. So we spent the entire next year working on version 2.0, where we doubled the amount of fart spray and Smart. drastically improved the formula, which ended up nearly killing Macaulay Culkin. Oh. <laughs> I still smell it. <laughs> we also switched oh. to biodegradable glitter and added a meaningless Five, countdown. Four. And some fake police chatter. Seems the package may be in motion as well. Just to make things more exciting. Then for your three. I love that. Just to fucking get them paranoid about it. That's so funny. We doubled the fart spray canisters once again to a total of four and added a oh. handle the thief would be tempted to grab, which we covered in that super stinky mousetrap goop. And for the previous two years, the package thieves would oh often shove the lid back on right away, which covered up the cameras. So we added these posts near the top of the box uh -huh. that would passively pop out, which made it impossible to put the lid back on once you'd removed it. 14, 13. We also added flashing police lights and made a doormat that had these conductive charging contacts <laughs> so we could keep the whole... <laughs> What the fuck? Wait, like it's just they just keep going. This is insane. Box fully charged. There's more tech in this than a PS5. Until the moment it was stolen. Then for Glitter Bomb 4.0, as soon as you touch the lid, it would get shot straight up into the air. Uh -huh. Complements of these two boxing gloves attached to pneumatic pistons. Oh we my also God. added an actual car horn to make things more exciting and redesigned the cup so that by using the centrifugal force generated from spinning, you could passively get three chances to shoot some glitter instead of losing it all in one single oh, shot. Oh, wow. And the porch, we built a fake planter box that would slide over and hide the package at night so the homeowners wouldn't have to worry about bringing it in, and we were guaranteed to get it stolen in the day when the light was better and all of that bro you've got to keep in mind mark rober used to work at nasa okay so this is just like what he does yay yeah, like instead of like making rocket ships or whatever uh he just goes and uh fucking does this shit Brings us to year five. Glitter bomb. He's an engineer. 5. Yeah. He's an engineer. I knew this was going to be the last year, so I decided to go for broke and attempt the biggest redesign to date. And this is a terrible idea, by the way. In engineering, if something is working well enough, conventional wisdom states you should basically change nothing, it ain't broke, but pretend don't fix like it. you changed a lot. So for yeah. starters, last year we had four yeah, vials of fart spray for there a total go. of 20 milliliters, and for this year, because we're not messing around, we have a one liter tank. And for those of you keeping track at home, that's 50. 50 times more fart spray. Holy to pull this off, shit. instead of using a rotating cam system like before, now we have a peristaltic pump that continually forces the fart spray through two nozzles and basically- What if he was like, okay, so this time, just to make it more exciting, we put a bomb in there, and so we have a lot of C4, uh, it, you know, like some, uh, some gas bombs in there, and basically whenever they open it, it blows up the house. 
<laughs> you know, like that's we're only about a few years away from that happening. Never let. Yeah, it's 20.0. I can't exactly yeah. explain how much worse something smells over video. Oh. Oh. This is a sensor that measures the number of particulates in the air. And the more particulates, the more intense the smell. And if we place last year's glitter bomb in the chamber, it measures 250 particulates of uh -huh. nastiness per liter, whereas this year's tops out at 750. So which it's means it's not only going to last a lot longer, but it's going to be three times more intense. Oh. Now, to house that massive reservoir of fart spray, we had to expand the footprint for the box, which means oh, we good. had room underneath it to house the brains of the system on an upgraded custom printed circuit board that communicates directly with all four phones. Is that and quick right? shout out to my friends at T-Mobile because last year we found they had the best coverage we were replacing the boxes. So this year they hooked us up and let us put them all on their network. Then for the glitter delivery oh mechanism, God. the idea was to hack some of these mini drones and rewrite their code to make them autonomous where they could fly themselves without needing to be in communication with the computer. So Skynet basically. Okay, sure. Yeah, this makes sense. So the idea for this year is the thief would bring the bait package back to their house, then remove the lid, right. which would lower these two doors, allowing the drones to wake up and take off. And so instead of a single concentrated area of glitter- He should have just put a bunch of wasps in there. Like, that would have been good. Yeah, you know, like, like I have, like, fuck the bomb, right? Just put, like, a whole nest full of wasps in there. <laughs> and they open it up and it just- woof, Fucking fly out. Yeah, a bunch of fucking hornets from a spinning cup like before, the drones would just meander all around the house, leaving millions of tiny shimmering reminders not to take stuff that isn't yours. Oh and my God. Of right, if the proximity sensors register someone approaching, they'll just casually fly themselves to a different part of the room. Oh. And all of that perfectly sets up the checkmate because while they're fully distracted dealing with the drones, the box starts to drastically change the room's air quality at a rate of one liter per minute. Ugh. This design was ambitious and arguably had a much higher risk of failure in the field, but oh. then we took it one step further by designing a sister box that could be used for a car break-in. Since I live near San Francisco, okay. which is the smash and grab capital of the world, two years ago, we went right into the lion's den, which placed the box in a somewhat alarming predicament. <laughs> and while tempting, it seemed irresponsible to have a couple drones flying around inside a moving vehicle. So this box could be triggered remotely via text message and can activate the fart spray without needing to be opened. And then right before the nozzles kick in, this 360 cam pops up to cover all the action. And oh if at any my point God. the camera senses it's being tampered with, just like one of those fancy hood ornaments, it will retract itself back inside the box. So after about 10 months- I didn't even know the hood ornaments did that. That's nuts. Like, what the fuck? Holy shit. Designing, building, and testing. Expensive ones, too? We set them out on wow. a bunch of porches and in a bunch of cars, and we That's wait. That's why I don't have an expensive and car. And we didn't have to wait long. There it is. Brand new in the box, bro. Brand new in the box. Those guys are now. Huh. Yeah, I guess it's mine now, homie. I guess it's mine now, homie. Oh, shit. Damn, bro. I forgot what happened, but they just pulled out a gun. Yeah, they said I 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 pulled out a gun. Yeah, they Oh my god. 15, 14, 13, 13, uh oh. 13, 2, oh, they're trying 1. to put the. They're trying to put it back. Complete. Recovery sequence initiated. They're trying to throw it out the door. And I really appreciate the hustle from these guys, especially because they're we're running. all said and done. <laughs> they just decide to make this their neighbor's problem. <laughs> They just threw it in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty smart. Just throw it in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> Fuck him. Get him out of here. When we retrieved this next box, as Problem you can solved. see, it was completely destroyed and the phones were gone. But thanks to those blazing T-Mobile networks... Why am I not surprised the phones are gone? We were able to recover the following footage from the cloud. Oh my god. 
Christopher here. Set it down a little. Hey, right here, the other camera. Actually, I'm going to give it to you for Christmas. Yeah. No way. What? The new one, huh? Yeah, it's the okay, new version. Can we just leave it in the car for now? Yeah, we'll leave it in the car for now. Because we're not trying to... Bring attention to it. So they eventually took this home and were apparently pretty upfront with their kids about where they got it from. It's a VR. It's really what it is. It has the handles and everything. So they go for like one of the plus. Keep it, keep it. They can get another one. Yeah. You can make keep it, keep it. They can get another one. You can make money, bro. That kid is a straight up gangster. God damn. Fuck him. Bro, by the way, like, I I'm not gonna feel bad. I'm not gonna feel bad. Like, they said, bro, that got thrown in their yard. You wanna open it? Let's open it. Alright, here we go. Oh my god, it's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking lying. Mom. Mom, I think it is a bomb. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> And in addition to porches, just like oh in years past, god. we placed some- Mom, it's a bomb! <laughs> oh my god. ...boxes by group mailboxes, so that way we could track the number of oh, good Samaritans different one? that will okay. call the number on the box from year to year. It's for me and for you. Aww. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> just... Ugh. My favorite part about this is the countdown. That's the best part about it. The fucking countdown. <laughs> I, think I think it's a scam. Take it back to the store, mom. You, YouTubers. The funniest fucking thing is the only person who actually immediately figured out what was going on was an eight-year-old. That's impressive. Yeah, the, like some fucking eight-year-old is- Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, he knows. I love how also, like, saying fuck you YouTubers also implies that he knows about the glitter bombs, and he knows that it's things that people steal, and it implies that he knows that his mom stole this to give it to him. You realize, like, how much lore that unlocks? Steal this thing, it's a scam. Oh yeah, let's have the baby go near the bomb. 15, 14. They do this to scam people. Oh my god. To scam people, wow. True. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, He's running with 7, it. 6, He's through 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Activation complete. Recovery sequence initiated. Switching gears for a minute, for the past two years, I've experimented with placing a glitter bomb in a parked car up in San Francisco because it's considered uh -huh. the car breaking capital of the world. And things are so bad now, it's not even just the parked cars that are getting targeted. Oh, they that's 73 car break ins. That's fucking now. impressive. It's in San Francisco wow. because it's considered the car breaking capital of the world. And things are so bad now, it's not even just the parked car. Bro, he got it out of the car? Jesus, that's how you get shot? No, the thing is, it's always, uh, uh, my friend told me this, but it's easier to, so basically a lot of the, uh, the back windows of cars are not shatter resistant. So like if you do it through a windshield or like one of the side windows, they're way more shatter resistant, but the back windows aren't. So it's easier to break them and then get in there that are getting targeted. They average 73 car break-ins per day, and at this point, wow. people have resorted to just leaving their doors wide open, hoping the thieves can wow. verify for themselves that there's no valuables inside, so they won't smash the glass just to check. And for the past- I mean, to me, like, I always leave my car unlocked. I've never, I've never locked my car. Yeah, no reason to. Two years, while we did get the glitter bomb stolen- If somebody always... steals shit out of my car, trust me, they're cleaning it. What could really do was just play an alarm sound so they throw them out. 
because they never actually open them in the car. And after doing some research, it turns out there's a reason for that. It's actually a fairly organized system called a fencing operation, where the cars will go out in groups, and then immediately afterwards, they'll bring it to a middleman who will pay cash in exchange for the most valuable things they steal, like laptops. But the gut punch is that important documents like a passport or pictures or plane tickets don't really hold value for the thieves. Yeah, so they just get thrown in yeah. the trash. And now that we knew they didn't plan on opening the box in the car, we designed the nozzles to poke through the lid so that even if they just- Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they sell it on the spot. Well, what they do is they'll they'll like, like you you do this, like there's also like with car mirrors, people break car mirrors off and stuff and sell those too. And, and like, there's a lot of these things that are actually worth a good amount of money. And if you're just stealing them, you can make a lot of money. Through it's in the nuts. back seat. Once the proximity sensor on the bottom registered it was stolen and the box texted us, we could track them using the embedded GPS, and a simple text message back would raise the camera and activate the fart spray for two minutes straight. So we headed up to the city and placed our modified car box nice and visible in the car and commenced our stakeout. And you okay. can see this first black car rolls up and this guy gets out and spots it but doesn't take it. And then a little while later, That's this smart. beige car rolls up and he sees it too and the same thing happens. Then not too long after that, this white car rolls up and once again, they clearly see the box, but they just leave it sitting right there without even breaking a window. And after observing all this, our best guess was that it was the size of the box that was spooking them. So we removed the heart and all the other critical components. I like how he treats them like it's like you're trying to attract a, uh, you know, like a lion or something like that. Like some sort of like fucking like safari animal into, into a camp to capture it or something like that. Yeah from the large box and place them into a smaller box. And while it occupied a smaller footprint, it maintained all the same functionality of the bigger box while still looking like an enticing item to steal. So the next day, we put it back out on the street, but this time someone came by and actually smashed the window. Only we didn't see them leave with the box. And our working assumption was that he just wasn't able to open the door to take it. But when we checked the footage, it told a different story. I know what the problem is. He's too stupid to know what this is. So because it's not like just a very simple, like it's a phone or whatever, he doesn't know what it is. So he thinks it's not worth anything. That must not be Not only it. did he once again intentionally not steal a smaller box, but the real reason for breaking the small window was to pull the back seat down and check the trunk. Which means if you take nothing else away from this video, you should know putting your luggage- Well, no, in it's like the, the logic behind that is this. If there's stuff in the front of the car, there's also a higher chance there's stuff in the trunk. Because obviously this person has stuff in the car. So if they've already got stuff in the car, let's check in the trunk too. Trunk is not a solution to keep it from getting stolen. That's what I think. The reason they break these little windows so often, but it seems like nothing is missing, is because they're pulling down the seat to quickly check what's hidden from view in the trunk. And at this point, it was pretty disappointing, but we realized they'd adapted. Word must have gotten out from stealing our glitter bombs in previous years that a juicy looking box like this sitting out in plain sight is nothing but trouble. And as an engineer, I never claim to have all the answers, but I know the process to get all the answers. And that's trying and failing and tweaking over and over again. So what we did- I think the solution is to put something that's more expensive in there, like a PS5. I, 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 I think if you put a PS5 in there, somebody would show up and buy it. Or somebody would not buy it, steal it. Here we go. Have a couple useless car a boxes laptop. and a busted window. We also knew their MO, which meant we now had a plan. And that plan was to shrink the box down even further to fit it in the backpack. That did mean we had to make some compromises okay. like losing the camera and reducing the fart spray reservoir down to this improvised pouch. But to make sure that it was still adequate, mm -hmm. we sprayed it on this chair and not only did it still last for two minutes, but we left that chair outside to air out and confirmed a few days later, it was still in real bad shape. Good. So with renewed hopes, we once again hit the streets, this time with two backpacks in two separate cars parked in two different spots. Got and it. as fate would have it, they both got hit with it about Five minutes of each other. Oh, oh bruh. Oh, bro, we got it. Oh, shit. Once again, you can see they're checking the trunk. God damn, he's going all the way in on that. Holy shit. 
And there's two interesting things to point out here. Number one, if you look at the jacket on this guy and compare it to the jacket from the previous break-in, uh -huh. you can see it's the same guy, suggesting they probably work the same routes, which means they probably recognize regularly parked cars versus a new visiting car. So I felt especially honored that a trained professional like this fell for our backpack, even Makes if sense. it was possibly yeah. a desperate attempt just to find a belt. And number two, you can see just how quickly it all happens, even breaking the glass. The thing with tempered glass is it's really hard to break, until it isn't. And while this guy looks like Iron Man here, just casually pushing his hand through, what you don't see on is his using, palm uh, embedded in the is glove- Is he using the, uh, the plaster? is a sharp ceramic chunk or a spike of hardened steel sort yeah. of like this. And as you can see here- Yeah, it's a ceramic. Or is it, yeah, a ceramic, like a, a piece of uh, fucking like a, a toilet stuff. Like you make toilet, yeah, porcelain. That's how, that's how you break those windows. Here, if you have the right tool to concentrate Spark force plug. on a really yeah. small point, it safely crumbles to nothing almost instantly. But more it, It's made to do that. So it doesn't, the reason why the glass is made that way is so it doesn't turn into like these big shards and cut people up. Toilet stuff? Yeah, that. well, I mean like, like it, it's like the plaster, like porcelain. I, I forgot what it was exactly, okay? It's been, it's been a long time. Now we had both boxes registering they'd been stolen while we tracked them both on their embedded GPS, watching as they made their way around, stopping periodically to hit more cars. Oh, that's smart. Oh, and after they, they let me steal their stuff about 10 minutes we sent a command to commence operation air freshener oh no and unfortunately, because we had to condense everything down so small sort of last minute, the mic was in the same small box as the pump, so we don't know exactly what was said. But what we do know is that about 90 seconds after the pump started, they tossed the whole bag from the car. And the best part about this is that outside the backpack, the pump and spray are actually really quiet. So the only possible way they could have located the source is if they sniff their way to the answer. And as our uh. test showed, they'll continue sniffing it for weeks. Uh. And in the second car, it was Good. a nearly identical outcome. Only in this case, because the pump ran a little quieter at one point, we got to hear them close in on the source. And about 20 seconds later, their backpack met the exact same fate as the first. God put that to right, me, so yeah. Wrap up, I'll just say that God wants year, me to steal. We've seen a decreasing number of package steals and a steadily increasing number of good Samaritans. And maybe people are becoming more considerate or perhaps everyone just knows what a glitter bomb looks like now, but I love the idea that at some point someone's package wasn't stolen because a would-be porch pirate remembered these videos and had second thoughts. Yep. One thing that's not conjecture, however, is after so many of you actively shared our video where we infiltrated and- we watched this. this this shit was crazy bombed those three terrible scam call centers in india it got the attention of some international law enforcement agencies and from the press and because of your efforts those three centers that had each been in operation for more than a decade doing upwards of 20 million dollars a year scamming the most vulnerable amongst us of their life savings all got shut down with their top officials arrested so thanks so wow holy shit so they're just done. That's fucking impressive, man. Oh my god. All of you Easy get for fucked, watching yeah. and caring. And of course, thanks to these two, because without them, none of this would have ever happened. Being an engineer is the best wow. because you can make whatever you can dream up. But what's the first step? Like, how do you get started down that path? Well, I'll tell you exactly what is how. This? It's called the Crunch Labs Build Box. And it gets delivered right to your doorstep every month, and then we build it together while I teach you all the juicy physics that make it work. It's basically like unlocking your own personal Mark Rover video every month, where you learn a new engineering principle that will have you not just building like an engineer, but more importantly, thinking like an engineer. So you're developing- Bro, that's such a cool thing. That's actually, yeah, he has an ad for himself for you to teach your kids about like science and shit. God damn. This guy's a legend. 
developing resiliency and problem-solving skills. On top of that, the toys themselves are really fun, like this super dope art machine where we learn about linkages, or in the spirit of the glitter bomb, this tripwire, which you can use to prank your family, or I suppose in some cases, yourself. So if you want to embark on this year-long journey with me, while there's still time to get it before Christmas, just head on over to crunchlabs.com or use the link in the video description. That's a really good idea. Two months free as a holiday special. Damn. That's a nice dude. Look at that. Wow. What a fucking legend. Problem, Dad? Yeah, that's what you get, Dad. <laughs> Is it nothing to do, do with engineering? It's just toys? No, it, it does because the this toys are using different engineering principles. Like, that's how they work. Do you understand? So, like, each different each toy teaches something different. Like, I, I know that's what it might seem like to you, but it's kind of obvious. Yeah, it's like mechanics, right? It's like, imagine... Like, just because, it's like whenever you fight a trash mob in a in our dungeon, and the trash mobs have some of the mechanics the boss mob does, or the boss does, it's kind of the same thing. Ban them? Yeah, it's too hard for chat. Yeah, it's using principles. It, it's, it's a very good idea, to be honest. I'm going to link this video, okay? Yeah, this is a ridiculously, I, I fucking love these videos. I'm going to be totally honest. I think these glitter bomb videos are fucking hilarious. I think the best part about it was whenever the kid realized that his mom stole it because he thought it was a YouTuber that did the vi that did the thing. That's a hundred percent the best, right? Yeah. I love that. See that shit we got in chat. Yeah. True, man. And uh, Mark's a genius engineer. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. I mean, he, to be able to make something like this, I bet it probably seems really simple, but it's really, really complex to actually get something like this to fit together, man. That is nuts. Check his five beating five scam arcade games with science video EZ. I might watch that at a certain point. I don't know if I'm going to watch it today, but I will watch that eventually. Got to start stealing boxes to get into Mark's video. Yeah, true. And uh, what's this here? And uh, pretty sure he used to uh, work on the Mars rover. No, his name is Mark Rober, not Mars Rober. Like, or sorry, Mars Rover. That, that's, there's no way that a guy named Mark Rober worked on the Mars rover. Like, there's no, bro. Like, he actually, there's no way that happened. Like, that's like a fucking, bro, that's like some fucking Dr. Seuss cat in the hat shit. There's no way that happened, right? Oh my god, he did. Wow. Um, Mark Rover, Mars Rover. Yeah. I, I, oh my god. That's so fucking funny. This is the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like a fucking Matrix moment, man. Holy shit. Um... Well, anyway, I fucking love these videos. I think they're amazing. I, I think the best part about them is just seeing some dumb fuck just get completely finessed. And also, especially, like, listening to them talk about it. Because they're so stupid. They're so dumb. They're like, oh, what's this? Oh, what is this? Is it a bomb? Oh, my God. Oh, uh. It's just funny as fuck to see how dumb these guys are. But, yeah, that's not a surprise at all. And, uh... Let me see this here. I, I have to um, I have to call my dad and uh, sort something out with him, and then I will be back. Give me one second.